Welcome to Gray Overload. I'm Anthony and Intel announced their 8th generation processors today. Let's dive in. I am super excited today to talk about the Intel 8th generation core series processors here. They were basically just talking about the U series today. Intel did announce that later on this year in the fall they plan they plan to announce and launch the um, other series as well, the Y, the H, the S series, so all the way up to desktops and everything else, um, more powerful laptops, etc. But first off, I want to just start off and hit it off the bat with what Intel, I think their biggest uh, part of this is, is that they're saying it's 40% better than the last generation in the same series, in the same 15-watt um, package as well. And this is going to four cores and eight threads instead of two cores and four threads. So they're adding two more cores. This is just huge. I think that this is now going to start making those devices and merging them into more. Yeah, you you have power when you need it, but yet you have that portability when you want it. And I think with, and then they also said with design and manufacturing, this is now 40% better. So you included two more cores, manufacturing and design, and that equals 40% better than the last generation. Then they started talking about uh, versus five year old computers, five year old processors. And that's just a huge change because now you're going from something that's old, old technology, you know, to us now, old technology, right? But that's going to be able to now take advantage of two more cores and have that much more power. So they're saying there's a 2x in performance of productivity performance and a 1.9x in web performance here for my notes that they're saying the difference between a five-year-old and this new eighth generation. So that's on top of being that 40% better of the last generation. Uh, uh, adi or additional information on that. So I think that that's huge. I think that's, that's a game-changing effect for many people that are looking maybe for a new device or in the last five years, you know, they, they realize that there's something else. And hopefully Intel markets this right as well. And I, I don't know why Intel decided to jump up there. I was hoping for more cores later on in this, now the four cores and eight threads. I would love my Surface to have been that as well. But, you know, maybe AMD's a little pressure and maybe with uh, AMD coming out with maybe that same type um, package or watt wattage package as well, kind of can push Intel even further. I'm excited to see what happens if that's the case as well. But getting back here, Intel says they have 145 design wins already. And this is, you know, that's going to be huge. I'm excited to see what they are. Hopefully you got some new ones so we don't keep retreading every single design but some more innovative ones as well. Stream more 4K and you know everything's going 4K, but this is gonna be that benefit of a better processor that's now been had a few, couple generations to implement. Then, you know, Windows 10 mixed reality. I think that this is gonna be huge um, for VR if, if Intel can sell enough of these devices. And that's gonna be basically mainstream VR, which I think is a big thing to have VR take off where you start to bring down the price point or bring down the devices that are needed to be able to support VR instead of having a big huge desktop that, that's powerful or whatever you're putting it in these thinner devices and that can be a huge selling point as well for especially for VR um, add-ons as well you know uh, perils so better battery life and I hope that this was the case that we get better battery life as we should with every generation but they're saying up to 10 hours and that's a reference mile so I'm sure mileage will vary but getting now into the specs after going through kind of some of the stuff that they talked about and uh, you know that's gonna help sell the device but now back into the specs base clock speeds are 1.6 on their uh, low-end i5 all the way up to uh, 1.9 on the high-end uh, i7 and then you have boost clocks 3.6 uh, or oh, my bad 3.4 um, on the low end i5 all the way up 4.2 on the high end i7 so they're still giving you that boost of when you need it i would like to know and hopefully i get a device that i can test this on how long you can sustain the 4.2 or whichever device i get 3.4 um, etc on these things so they have four processors here i'll leave um Intel's uh, news room link in the description below, but uh, di slightly different in caches. The i5 only has six instead of eight megs as well. But 
overall, I think that this is a great part to, for Intel to introduce here today. Um, the ba major, major thing for me is not so much of all the other enhancements with design and manufacturing, but the extra cores. I think that is game changing for them um, in this market to help out device manufacturers deliver better computers for many, many users that are requiring maybe that extra little power when they want it or need, to need it and have to use it, and then also give them the portability that they deserve. So I wanna thank you for watching Gray Overload. Thank you for taking the time and helping continually grow this channel. Um, I want to thank you for your support as, you can, as we continue to grow. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Gray Overload. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe.